Okay, uh, in the kiln right now, I got about 5,000 board feet of walnut. And right now I'm conditioning. This is the second to the last step in kiln drying. And I'm basically flashing off about four pounds or a half a gallon of water a minute. Superheated steam. I will bring, uh, it's been running approximately two minutes. And it started at about 20% humidity and 117 degrees is what I have it in here. And it's up to 65% humidity in about two minutes. And this is the only way to properly condition wood, which basically plasticizes the outer fibers or the shell of the boards and takes out tension. This it takes approximately 30 minutes. So basically I'm gonna flash about 15 gallons of water into steam. And the humidity will get up to about 95% by the time I'm done. Then basically I, I open the doors and I, I want to rapidly drop the humidity. And then the last the last part of the kiln drying process is the equalization where basically I just kind of let it sit and equalize because I want the uh, moisture content to be as even as possible. So being, not being in a hurry is advantageous. Now this is different than steaming walnut when you buy walnut from most manufacturers. The walnut is cut and then flat stacked with no stickers, no spacers, and put in a pressure vessel, I believe for like 30 days, and they inject steam under high pressure for 30 days. And that basically bleeds all the heartwood into the sapwood. So it pretty much washes out all the color. So this is not the same process. This is basically kind of like if you steam bend wood, you put your wood in a steam box and it softens the fibers on the outside of the board. And that releases the tension set because the wood is case hardened when it dries. But you got to be careful over that you steam don't. because then you do what they call reverse case hardening and you can't fix that. And I'll show some samples quick on the sample boards I take when I'm uh, conditioning at the end to know when the tension okay, set is taken out. Okay, here's two um, shell or stress samples that you would take um, throughout the kiln um, on each load. And and basically you, you would take a board, you'd trim off a little bit, then you'd cut like a one inch strip. Then you take it to your bandsaw and you cut this shape, this shape out right here. And what happens is, and when wood dries it has uh, tension set. The inside, the, sh the core of the, of the board is in um, tension and the outside of the board is in compression. It's actually reversed when it first starts drying. So what it does is, it it pulls it together and if this were a two inch thick eight quarter piece I couldn't even if I grabbed that with both hands I could not pull that apart that is how much stress is in lumber when it dries so by the conditioning process when you're uh, introducing high temperature steam at a large volume to saturate the outer fibers of the of the board in, in my kiln with my size load, it takes about 30 minutes. And then I cut a sample board, I go to my bandsaw, I cut it, and it's, it's even like that. Now if I were to keep introducing steam for a longer period of time, then this would be reverse case hardened. This would flare out like that. And I've never had that happen because I watch it pretty close. But if you don't watch it and that happens and that flares out, you can't fix that. Um, and anybody who's taken a board and put it on their miter saw and cut down on it and had it clamped down on your blade, that is primarily caused by um, internal stresses in the board and that happened when it dried. So I don't know if that kind of helped explain it. Okay, it's been about 25 minutes 
and I can't stay in here long. Uh, the humidity is up to a little over 90 percent at about 135 degrees. Um, in about five minutes I will shut off the steam and open the doors. And what you want to do is you want to reduce the humidity as rapidly as possible so you don't induce reverse case hardening. You don't want the humidity in here any longer. Um, so I gotta shut this down because this is painful being in here. Okay, now that I'm uh, done steaming and I've uh, I had the doors open for about a half hour after I'm, I'm done. Um, I've got the uh, controller back on to bring the, uh, take out what extra humidity is and bring it back down to um, the humidity level that I'm shooting for at the end of the drying process. And you see two temperature controllers, the one on the left and the one on the right and the one on the left, that controls the temperature of the kiln. And right now it's set at 120 degrees. The red letters above is the actual temperature. And the one on the right, <clears throat> that is the wet bulb temperature. And that 95 degrees is my set point. The actual wet bulb temperature in the kiln right now is 104.6. And that's coming down um, as um, the dehumidifier takes moisture out of the air and I'll explain that wet bulb a lot of people ask me what is wet bulb temperature and uh, what does it do it's it's a really hard concept to grasp but basically what I'm shooting for at 120 degrees at a 95 degree wet bulb temperature what what that ends up get, giving me is about a 39.8 percent humidity so nominally 40 percent humidity at 120 degrees okay that's that's what i'm shooting for at the end of the kiln drying process and that's when basically the wood is below 25 percent moisture content so you got to do your moisture samples and keep track and basically, uh, you know, the longer the wood is in the kiln, the more you raise the temperature. And at 120 degrees, at about 40% humidity is around 6.7% moisture content in the wood. And that's, that's what we're shooting for. Uh, that's why going slow is, I guess, kind of the way I go. I don't, uh, I don't rush kiln drying any part of the process. And so what's happening right now is... Uh, the temperature, um, the dry bulb temperature is being driven by the compressor, the latent heat off the compressor, and the latent heat off the, the circulation fans in the kiln. So that's kind of continuing to climb. Um, and this <clears throat> should be dropping. Uh, five minutes ago, this was about 106 degrees. And as the water comes out of the kiln, um, and this is the water coming out of the kiln right here. So as that water comes out of the kiln, the dry bulb temperature is going to drop. Once it drops to 95, then the compressor will kick off. So this side, the dry, the dry bulb thermometer in the kiln, is just like a thermometer like you'd have when you take your temperature and you stick it, you know, you know, when your mom gives you takes your temperature or whatever, that's a dry bulb thermometer. And it's just measuring the uh, atmosphere in a dry condition on the, on the thermometer. Okay. Now, a wet bulb thermometer, basically there's a bottle of water sitting next to the, that same kind of a probe. And there's a hole in the cap and there's a wick, a cloth wick, like a tubular piece of cloth kind of shaped like a straw. And that goes down into the water supply and it comes up through the top of the bottle and immediately that's right at the end of that dry bulb wick and so that keeps that thermometer probe wet and when it's continuously wet and there's air movement by it the more 
humidity that's in the area, the less evaporative cooling you have, and the and the um, and the warmer that this is going to get. Just like it's really humid in there right now, and it's 104. Now the drier it gets in there, when the wood, when the air in the kiln gets drier and drier and drier, and it drops down in temperature because it's getting cooler. The, it's just like when you get out of the shower on a really dry day in the winter and you got a lot of evaporative cooling on your skin. See, now it just dropped down to 105, or it went up to 105. It's, it's fluctuating. It's going to take a while for that to catch up and, and, and get that to drop um, because I just closed the door. With leaving the doors open on the kiln, this will drop faster. But this might take four or five hours to bring that back down. But anyway, so when you get out of the shower and you're, it, it's really dry, you're really cold. So that's the same thing. The drier the air in the kiln, that the more evaporative cooling, the more water that evaporates off that wick, and that makes that temperature probe cooler, okay? And so once it gets down to 95, it, it, you know, it's basically telling the controller, hey, it's really dry in the kiln, so shut off the compressor, you know, sh stop taking water out of the air. Now as this temperature is maintained, and this is, this is climbing here, I'll explain that in a minute, but as the temperature is maintained in the kiln and more water comes out of the wood into the sealed kiln, this is a dehumidification kiln, just like, a, it's basically a glorified dehumidifier. So as the water moisture increases in the kiln coming out of the wood, this will start to climb because there, there's, there's more moisture in the air. So that's like getting out of the shower on a really muggy day. You don't feel cool, uh, your skin doesn't dry, and that's what's happening. The more moisture in the kiln, the less evaporation there is on that wick, on that thermometer probe. So it's almost counterintuitive to what you think, and it's a, it's a real hard thing to grasp. But basically, I would say in about three hours, that moisture, which I probably dumped about 15 gallons of water in steam into the kiln. And that was all basically sucked up by the shells of the 5,000 board feet of wood in there. And that's that's not a lot of water. You know, 15 gallons of water is nothing compared to how much water has been removed out of 5,000 board feet of wood. So now the reason this is climbing is because when the compressor is on, it adds heat into the kiln because the, that's basically what's cooling the compressor. It's latent heat. Just like down in your basement in the area where your dehumidifier is sitting, it gets really warm because there's warm air coming off the dehumidifier and that's the latent heat coming off the dehumidifier. So I kind of have an excess of heat in there. This is trying to catch up to drop this down. And once that drops down and the compressor kicks off, this will this temperature, the dry bulb temperature, will immediately start to drop. Um, so I'm kind of explaining this and trying to keep it simple and not get it too complicated with all the other factors involved. So I hope that kind of explains what happens. And then uh, basically, once this uh, wet bulb temperature uh, is down to 95 and this will start dropping down but basically then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna kick the temperature of the kiln up to 130 degrees and that's one of the last things you do uh, in the kiln and basically you keep it at 130 degrees for 24 hours and that will kill any bugs any eggs any larvae whatever's in that kiln is gonna be dead uh, you can get bugs inside wood and they will they will still live at 120 degrees so this is a wet bulb thermometer and the water bottle and right here, this here is the dry bulb thermometer. So this is just in the air. It's measuring the temperature of the air of the kiln. So right now I've got it set at 120 degrees. So this thing is like a thermostat in your house. It tells the thing, hey, I need more heat, or I don't, or it's too warm in here. So that it doesn't turn on the heater. It's an, it's an electric heater in the kiln. So that's what heats the kiln is electricity. And then this is the wet bulb thermometer that has the wick on it that keeps it wet constantly and that tells the compressor to either turn on or turn off 